A promotion request is a method of advancing an object through its life cycle. Let's take a look at an example of using a promotion request to do that. I'm going to navigate to an object. I happen to know what folder it is in. Let me go to my products and then to my folders within one of the products. Let's go to our advanced bender robot. Let's see, where is the top level assembly? There it is. I'm gonna to go to the top level CAD document for the object that I want to promote. If you take a look on the details tab of the object information page for the CAD document, you can see the lifecycle template that's being used and also the states that are available. This is a very, very simple life cycle template that this one uses. It only has three states, in work, released, and canceled. Most likely, if I were implementing a life cycle template, I would have a few more states than this. I might have in work, or maybe I'll call it concept instead, maybe a prototype, maybe a released and an obsolete. It is up to you. The most important thing that I can recommend is that your organization should spend a lot of time thinking about what does released actually mean? Does this mean that you need this in order to build a prototype? Is this required for procurement to start buying stuff? What exactly in your organization do you use the released state for or other life cycle states? What are the different business rules and permissions that are available in the real world based on these life cycle states. Anyhow, to create my promotion request, I will go to the actions menu, and here we have new, and then I will choose new promotion request. And here we have the form for doing this. Let me grab the border and make it a little longer. Here's the name of the promotion request. By default, it's going to be the name of the object. I like to change that a little bit. Let me call this the Bender Robot release, something that's a little more straightforward than the default name that it, it is given. Here in the text field, you can enter in whatever other additional information. Here's the location that is going to go. By default, it's going to go to the same folder as that one. You might have a separate folder for all your promotion requests. It's up to you. And here we have a calendar that we can use to select the dates. I'll give people a couple weeks to review it. And there's an option here to apply a default collection. That's to grab the different components that belong to this. And I'm not sure what the default collection is set up in here. So I'm going to use the next button. I'm going to do it manually to make sure that I get what I want to get. And so right now we just have the top level of the assembly here. I'm going to check this box and that enables me to use the collect objects icon. And when I click on that by default, it's automatically going to grab all the required dependents in here. So that's good. I've got all the different components that belong to this assembly. But in addition to these CAD models, I also want to make sure that I am promoting the WT parts or the windshield parts that go along with them. So I'm going to select all rows, and then I can use this button over here. That's good. Typically what you would also want to do is you'd want to release the drawings at the same time. If you've got any family table instances, you wanna release those at the same time. You just wanna make sure that you are releasing everything that's appropriate in this particular package. This is good, I will click the OK button. And now I've got the list of different objects. And we can see in here that we have three different states that are available based on our lifecycle template. I'm going to use the select all button and then choose from this drop down list for the target promotion state. I want all of this stuff to be released, so I will select that. And then we're going to use the command to set these different objects for promotion. We've collected them, we specified the target state, but we actually haven't said, hey, we want to promote them. And that's what this icon means. It means that these objects will be promoted when we go through with this request. So now that I've got all the different objects, we can select the participants. You can either click on select participants here, or you can click the next button. 
and you have two different choices up at the top. You have a promotion request approval process, and the approval process means that people who are specified as approvers actually have to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the different objects. The other option is that you can do a promotion review process, which means that everything's going to be promoted automatically, but it just gives people an opportunity to comment on that. Why would you use a review process? And maybe it's just sort of a notification. Maybe you're releasing some standard library components, some standard parts, and you just want to let people know that, hey, these objects are getting released. But I'm going to use the approval process, and I'm going to find the person that I want to approve them. In this case, it's me. Now, normally, you're going to have multiple people in here. Hey, in my Windchill instance, I'm the only person. That's why when I check the box over here, a whole bunch of other boxes get checked because wherever, I'm, wherever I appear in here, it's going to mark me in here as the approver, even though I only need to approve it once. So again, with approvers, they have to vote on the object in order to advance the promotion request. Sometimes again, you just want people to be in the loop. You want them to be reviewers so that they're informed and they can write comments, but they don't actually have to vote thumbs up or thumbs down. If you want to do that, you can check them as a reviewer in the workflow. So this is good. I've got my promotion request filled out. Then I will click the finish button. And it says the promotion request was created successfully. I can click on the link over here in order to see it. We've got all the different objects that are listed. If you go to the process tab, you can see who are the different people in the roles. I'm the owner of this since I created it and I designate myself as an approver and a reviewer. Within here, you have the ability to designate someone else because stuff will happen where someone goes on vacation or someone gets sick or someone says, hey, you put me on this, but I really don't know anything about this thing that you're trying to release. It's not appropriate for me to review it. So in those cases, you can reassign those objects. And you also have the history tab here where you can keep track of the different actions as this is going through the closed loop process. Let me go to my home page and now I have a couple of additional tasks that are assigned to me. Since I placed myself as a reviewer, well, here I have the ability to review it. If I click on the review and then scroll down, I just have a field where I can enter in different comments about this. Let me go back to my home page. As an approver though, when I click on the task for approving this promotion request, here I can put in my comments, but I've got three different choices. I can approve it, I can reject it, or I could send it back to rework. Maybe they need to make a few minor different changes. If I send it back to rework, it'll go back to the owner. They can make the updates that I've requested. And when they finish those updates, the promotion request comes back to me and then it ends up going back to the reviewers to give their thumbs up or thumbs down. So let's say that I go through this and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good with this. I'm going to complete the task. And since I am the only uh, approver, that's enough to approve it. Again, they have a deadline in here of a couple weeks or looks like more than a few weeks to review it. But again, if a person has a review option, they can take a look at it, add some comments, and then complete the task so that they no longer have the task listed in their home page. And now if we go back to the bender assembly, I go down over here, we can see that its lifecycle state is now released. We can also go to the history and we can see the authorization here for where it went from in work into released. We can also see that information in the timeline history in terms of when the new revisions were created and where it was changed to released. So let's say that something is released and you want to send it back down to a lower lifecycle state. That process is called revise and we'll take a look at that in a, another video. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.